With Fallout 76 still months away from release and no idea on the horizon when exactly the beta is going to arrive, my excitement is bubbling away inside me with nowhere to spill other than making a video about it. Now, during Bethesda's E3 showcase, Todd Howard says, And we even use the folklore of West Virginia to bring our Fallout versions to life. So I've decided to do some research on what mythical beasts we may encounter in Fallout 76. You could consider this, I guess, a Conspiracy Corner Fallout 76 special. So we will. So sit back, grab your tinfoil hat, and let's explore the West Virginia folklore of Fallout 76. The most prominent cryptid throughout the Fallout 76 showcase at E3 was this Goliath-looking headless horror, better known as the Grafton Monster. With its stark white skin and gargantuan hulking demeanour, the Grafton Monster is a creature you would not want to bump into while exploring the wasteland. Nicknamed the Headless Horror, it can often be mistaken for a Bigfoot if shrouded in dense forest. However, although its nickname is very precise given that a face is often unreported or considered non-existent, it should not be taken for granted. Graftons are considered formidable hunters considering their size. Surviving on a diet of meat, they hunt rivers for fish such as walleye or trout, non-migratory birds, and it has also been reported that they will also feast on white-tailed deer if given the opportunity. Eyewitness accounts have also suggested that a Grafton won't hesitate to attack and feast on unattended pets. Graftons can be slow, but that's not something to underestimate, as they've been known to pick up speed over short distances, and if this trait is neglected, then you'll be sure as hell that you'll be in for a rough time. The hands or fists of a Grafton are its main weapon of choice. Slamming, crushing, slapping and thumping the Grafton can and will make short work of any enemy without sufficient protection, armour or firepower. Wastelanders tread carefully whenever they come across paste-like human remains as it's common knowledge that Graftons, when close to death, will lash out in a survival-like frenzy, pounding their enemy into the ground even when there is nothing but a cloud of red showering around them. Grafton, West Virginia, a city within Taylor County, was originally developed as a junction point for the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad, serving numerous branches for the coal industry. However, in the 1960s, Grafton was going to become more than just a railroad boomtown. With a population of around 5,000 residents during the 60s, the big city-looking village could be considered somewhat sleepy, what for its wall of small farms and dense woodland. However, throughout this woodland lurked a faceless beast, this beast weighed allegedly around 800 pounds and stood a staggering seven foot tall. The Grafton monster's skin is also compared to that of a seal's skin, apparently because of its slick appearance, but this is also allegedly caused by a thin layer of sweat or musk. You can find a very alarming amount of detail on these Grafton monsters. That's strange considering there's only ever been one recognised and documented sighting. Close to midnight on June 16th, 1965, Robert Cockrell, a young reporter at the Grafton Sentinel, was driving home on Riverside Drive. He sped up down the curvy, dark roads in eagerness to get to his destination. Suddenly, his headlights illuminated a huge white creature on the right side of the road, standing on a cleared-off section of grass. It was much larger than a tall man, appeared to be headless, had a hide with a soft shine to it, and display little to no concern at all of Cockrell's presence as it remained motionless as he drove by. Robert returned to the site where he had spotted the beast, this time with two friends. Searching for up to an hour though, they found nothing but trampled grass. However, while searching, Robert claims he and his friends heard a low-pitched whistling sound that followed them along the river. Robert returned to work the next day and was claimed to be rather reluctant to share his story. After informing his editor, however, he decided to share his encounter. And then on June 18th, an article was published detailing Robert's encounter that in turn sparked a city-wide hunt for the monster. Up to 100 citizens scoured the woods armed with flashlights, bats and crowbars in hopes of meeting this headless horror. 
More than 20 even claimed to have encountered it, but on June 19th, the Grafton Sentinel newspaper Robert Cockrell worked for dismissed the creature, claiming it was nothing more than a widely imaginative story caused by a lack of recreational facilities and spring fever. Although hunts for the monster dwindled, the sightings never did. TV shows such as Mountain Monster still regard the Grafton monster as being active to this day. So looking at all the facts and the evidence that's provided to us, I guess, from the 1960s across the internet and through word of mouth, we can probably safely say that the Grafton monster most likely doesn't truly exist. I'm not quite sure what Robert Cockrell saw that night. People have suggested that Robert did in fact see a pallet truck being pushed or that was placed on the side of the road that was shrouded with a white sheet over the top. Now, how on earth you would confuse that with a Goliath-like creature like this? I don't know. Now, I love cryptozoology. I like playing indie games like Bigfoot, The Rake, and Witch Hunt, and I've been obsessed with the Loch Ness Monster since I found out about it when I was around 12 years old. And to see the cryptozoology lore implemented into a franchise that I'm obsessed with such as fallout is just music to my ears i think it's very exciting i think it's a, a cool new direction within the fallout franchise and i couldn't be happier to cover things like this for the channel so today we covered the grafton monster but there are a few more out there lurking in the wastelands of west virginia in fallout 76 we have the likes of the mothman the flatwoods monster the snarly yow and the infamous Wendigo. Now there are a few more beasts out there as we've seen from the Fallout 76 clips, but we can only speculate as to who or what they are. So before we actually dive in and conclude, we may need some more details from the source material. So what do you want to see me cover in the next episode? Leave your choice in the comment section down below. Leave me a like if you already haven't and subscribe if you've enjoyed what you've seen. But I guess until next time, see you later, bye. Well, you made it to the end of the video. That must mean you like what you saw, right? If you did enjoy it, leave me a like and leave me a comment in the comment section down below. And if you haven't already, why not hit subscribe? If you do hit subscribe though, make sure you hit the notification bell because that tells YouTube that you want to know every time I upload a video or whether I go live or something. Until then, see you later, bye.